Hello, hello. I have arrived. Artist, archivist, VTuber, and tonight. Uh, hold on. Yes. Okay, tonight. <laughs> Theoretical medical professional. I got a little bit turned around there. For some reason, I was thinking about the Coffee Talk intro, but no, that is not what we are playing today. <clears throat> today, we are playing Ark Knights. So, yes. So, I must say, I do not suffer summer lightly, but suffer I do. But yes, it is quite hot. Quite hot. <clears throat> and in light of that, I would just like to remind you all, now more than ever, given that it is summer in the Northern Hemisphere, remain hydrated, because, you know, the heat is, is bad. <laughs> It'll do bad things to you. So, in light of that, Sip. Anyway, also in light of the summer and all that, and you know, I'm not too, too upset with anything. I'm just being a little bit melodramatic, as I like to be. But yes, I definitely don't like summer, though. <laughs> anyway, in light of, of everything, probably we're going to take it a little bit easy today. I'm planning on streaming for probably less time than usual. Because uh, while I am streaming is one of the warmer times in this room. Because, you know, I have to keep my doors and windows shut for noise reasons. I also have to not have my standing fan on for noise reasons. I've got two computers running. It's a, it's a challenging time for a person like me. But what can you do? But yes, anyway, so Ark Knights tonight. Yeah, next week we should be back to the usual schedule, and yeah, we will see from there. But yes, the Wednesday stream is 8.30 p.m. Central Time, more Arc Nights. The Friday stream will most likely be closer to 9 p.m. Central Time, and hopefully, I think we should potentially have a collab lined up with Sheppy Sheps. Maybe that's why I was thinking about Coffee Talk. It was sort of buried in my subconscious, but... Anyway, so, that is that, this is this. Not a whole, whole lot else to be said, I suppose. It does feel, it does feel almost like I'm early today, but I'm, I'm not. I'm just not as late as I usually am. But, that's a win in and of itself, I would say. But yes. So, with no further reason to delay, I suppose we might as well bring ourselves over to the room. Or, well, I guess we're already in the room. We're in the studio. Go over to the game area. Or, the game. But yes, Ark Knights. So yes. So, if you will recall last time, I spent a lot of time thinking about strategy. I thought a lot about how I've been doing my tactics in the past. And how I could improve upon, improve upon things going forward. So, earlier today, I've spent some time compiling information about some of the various operators that I have, sort of trying to figure out, you know, what situations does this operator excel in, how do they compare against other operators that fill a similar role, and whatnot. Yeah, I've learned a little bit more about the specifics of how some of the subclasses work and whatnot. And I'm certainly far from done because there are many operators in this game, and I have many operators, so a lot of work needs to be gone through. But yes, a few things that I did want to take, that I did want to note for this. Uh, let me pull up my notes again. Uh, hmm. Actually, I'll need to, I need to remember where I saved these notes. Oh no, there we are. So yes, anyway. So, just to clarify on a few notes. So, I've mentioned before that certain operators I'm avoiding using for spoiler reasons. And so, just to elaborate on that a little bit more. So, the operators that I am avoiding are... Well, let me preface by saying, with the exception of a few, I don't really know because I've avoided spoilers myself to a large, to a large extent. With the exception of a few operators, I don't know precisely which ones 
have, uh, which ones have spoilers associated with them just in their mere existence or in their dialogue or whatnot. Yes, beyond a few exceptions. So, for the sake of caution, yes, to err on the side of caution, mostly I am excluding operators who are connected to a story event, but, you know, who, yeah, generally, let me rephrase that a little bit. There's a lot of operators that are, that are connected to story events, and a lot of those are ones that we have used. But yes, more specifically, I've been avoiding using operators who are connected to, like, came out with story events, essentially. Operators who were playable for a while beforehand, but then became, you know, involved in a story event later down the line, are basically fine by this, uh, this standard. Yeah, operators who have a uh, dialogue that sort of foreshadows events that come come later uh, are also fine. But yes. Anyway, so, you know, basically operators who, by their very existence or by some dialogue that they have, could potentially spoil the events of, or spoil the outcome of certain story events and whatnot. But yes. So... Now that we've said that, let's talk a little bit about the strategy, or the sort of goals for my strategizing. Because yeah, I'm not looking to achieve anything in particular, more so I'm just looking to, like I said, broaden my horizons a little bit. Because traditionally, in my casual playthroughs, I've spent a lot of time sort of using roughly the same strategies, basically, you know. Always two vanguards, always two defenders, always two medics. The rest of the team is somewhat negotiable within that boundary, but yeah. Pretty much always following that same general pattern. The exact operators that I use vary, of course, and, you know, outside of that, additional operators vary. But, you know, I made a lot of assumptions going into the game about how units are best positioned, what sorts of units are best for certain roles. And I'm realizing now that I'm actually, you know, playing through the game, that that's uh, generally not necessarily true. But yes, there's a lot of room for uh, differences. But yeah, there's a lot of operators that operate differently from others within the same archetype. There's a lot of ones that, where the my expectations for the archetype simply don't match up with reality. But yes, it's all a very interesting thing and something that I just have to be somewhat mindful of. So yes. Yeah, once again, you'll have to pardon me if I take things a little bit slower than usual. I am uh, quite tired from the heat again. But yes, I won't harp on that too much. I don't think to complain a whole lot. You may be forgiven for thinking otherwise, but anyway. So, basically, I want to change up a little bit how I approach strategy in the in this game. Yeah, I want to change up sort of what sorts of operators I use and what positions and all that. But yeah, like for instance, like generally speaking, I most often tend to place defenders at like the front of formations of melee units. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, I don't think. But I do think that it's not necessarily the end-all be-all that I've sort of used it as. Or rather that it is not always the best decision. Because yes, a lot of, a lot of guards, you know, or rather, you know, guards, most types of guards don't have a whole lot of ability to deal damage from behind a defender. Yeah, sometimes enemies do, yeah, enemies do sort of like end up in the defender's tile sometimes, but I think in some cases, depending on how tough the enemies are, it could be useful to use the, the defender more so for their ability to block large numbers of enemies rather than for their defense, strictly speaking. So placing a guard in front of them could be valuable. In particular, a guard who can hit multiple targets, such as a Centurion guard. But yes, so a persistent issue that, that we've been facing 
that I've been facing is just that very frequently we have a lot of enemies pile up in one spot and thus become sort of a death ball, if you will, whereby, you know, if my defense is compromised, if my defender is stunned, or if they are taken out by some sudden burst of damage or anything like that, from there, the whole defense immediately crumbles because, you know, if I even have a guard behind them is not always, uh, or I don't always have a guard behind them at all. If I do have a guard behind them, that guard, you know, definitely can't deal with all of that having uh, already broken through the defender. So, as I was saying, specifically Centurion defense, or Centurion guards, rather, are a approach that I've been thinking of as a way to ameliorate some of these issues, try and reduce enemy numbers before they become a big problem for the defenders and whatnot. But yes, I just realized I didn't have... But yes, it was something on my end, so nothing you need to concern yourself with. Anyway, so yes, of course, that is also not the end-all be-all, certainly. But, but yeah. So, again, I'm thinking probably I don't necessarily need to have every single defensive lane that I want to defend defended with a defender, <laughs> specifically. You know, there are probably going to be times when a single guard is sufficient. Or rather than placing a guard and a defender, situations where using two guards are sufficient. Both being able to block sufficiently and to be able to take out enemies fast enough that, you know, I don't need to be able to block as many as I would be able to block with a defender. Because again, another thing that I never really thought about, you know, I knew it, but it didn't, uh, it didn't occur to me. It didn't really, I didn't really uh, think about it, is the fact that being able to block more units sometimes means that you will be taking more damage because, you know, <clears throat> melee units can only attack when they are being blocked, generally speaking. Their normal attacks only hit whoever they are blocking. So, if you're blocking three units, for instance, that means that you're taking more damage than someone who is blocking two units, all else being equal. And of course, defenders typically have more defense and more HP than comparable units. But even so, you know, you would have to have... Yeah, again, a lot of the defenders that we use tend to have relatively low defense. So within that framework, it's understandable why we have some issues with our defense holding sometimes. But yes, defenders and guards and whatnot are not the only things that I've been thinking of but those are certainly issues, or that has been certainly an issue that I've wanted to try and find a way around, basically. But yeah, so anyway, broadly speaking, we have a new stage that we can go to today. But yes, and I'm sure that this is a boss stage, and I'm sure that we're going to be fighting Frost Nova. But I don't, I'm not sure I want to be facing it right, right away. Because again, I don't know. <laughs> Taking it easy a little bit. But yes, so I think we will take some time to try out some new things in some other stages. Kind of looking for ones that aren't too, too high level because I have adjusted the squad a little bit. Yes, in keeping with my goal of focusing on operators who are story relevant, we retain Amia, Meteorite, Jessica, and Frostleaf, of course. But yes, Ponsiris and Myrtle as our vanguards. Again, whether or not two vanguards are strictly necessary is something that could be called into question in the future. But for right now, I'm going to continue doing it because I simply uh, <laughs> haven't had time to learn enough to be able to come up with strategies that don't involve generating that much DP that quickly. So I guess uh, in 4.9, we had a decent time only using one Vanguard for the most part. I think, yeah, in our final clear of it, we didn't... Uh, I believe in our final clear of it, we didn't use Myrtle. 
So yes. So yes. Um, what else to be said? Uh, Estelle's on the team. And Cora is on the team, having switched off of Gummy. Gummy's healing is useful. But I think with the sort of new paradigm, if you will, I'm thinking there might be situations where having just a defender who is just like all defense, which Cora certainly is, with her ability to generate uh, a pretty sizable defense buff on top of the fact that she already has pretty high defense. But yeah. Losing her ability to attack in the process, of course. But yes. Fire whistle, of course. Whoops. Oh dear. But yes. I don't know if I've gone over support units before, but I don't feel like doing it right now, so we'll talk about it later. That is another wrinkle in, in uh, strategy. But yes, anyway. Fire Whistle has significantly less defense, as we've established. She is certainly more on the offensive side. But yes, so again, probably some of the issues we've been having with defense. Though Fire Whistle is Fire Whistle's been doing very well. And in part, I think that's, you know, due to the fact that we've really been playing to her strengths. Generally, we've been placing our units, you know, in front of her so that she can have the ability to continue using her mortars rather than having to waste time blocking. That's it. But yes, her ability to block notwithstanding, or even with her ability to block, it's generally not the most efficient use of her time. But yes, as for medics, we're currently using Hibiscus and Onsol. But yeah. We've switched back to using two single target medics rather than using a single target and a multi target. Because, yeah, I definitely. For one thing, Onsel and Hibiscus are just very high level as far as my medics go. They're definitely both tied for highest level medics, even with the fact that they are both at their level caps. But, yeah, they are my highest level medics, and I definitely hadn't taken into account previously the fact that. Just how much a difference the single target medics, whom are known as uh, medic medics. But yes, I hadn't taken into account just how much more attack medic medics had versus multi target medics, whose specific subclass name escapes me at this point. But yes, it's a pretty sizable increase, I've found. So, there are going to be a lot of situations in which even though healing two, two or three units at once leads to more units being healed overall, you know, if damage is being concentrated on <clears throat> one or two units, having one or two really good medics can definitely help out a lot on that. Multi-target healing is probably the sort of thing that I would want to bring out when necessary, but not necessarily rely on. So of course, our multi-target medics that we that we do have at a reasonable level, Thalopsis and Perfumer, are quite good in their own right. But again, they definitely are a lot weaker in terms of sheer healing capability compared to Onsel and Hibiscus. But yes, Estelle is here largely because she is a Centurion Guard, also because she didn't really have a chance to get... Uh, we used her before during the Monster Hunter event, but I don't feel like we made especially good use of her. But yes, I don't know precisely how I plan to, to use her to get especially good use of her, but the mere fact that she is uh, actually the highest level unit on this team currently uh, will probably be somewhat helpful. She's honestly a little bit higher than I might like. We might switch her out just because of her level. Because, yeah, again, I'm not arbitrarily restricting myself based on level. But, you know, I don't want to... I don't know. <laughs> All this time I've been trying not to make things too easy for myself. But then I'm, you know, out here spending one plus hours on individual levels and, and thinking, man, if only there was a way. If only there was a way I could clear levels more consistently. 
So we'll see. We'll see. The spread in levels is definitely going to make some units seem a lot better than others, I think. And I do think I will level up, you know, I will level up some of the units that we're using here. I'm still just sort of trying to figure out what I really want to do as sort of the, the default going forward, as well as be able to, uh, yeah, as well as having options to formulate more specific countermeasures for specific situations going forward. But yes, anyway, all that being said, uh, let's play the game. <laughs> It occurs to me that I don't know uh, what we're doing here. Operation commencing. Okay, so we have active Enemy Originium, so that's not All great. Prepare to engage. I don't want our enemies on that. My hammer's not so weak. I don't know that I want to do this. In fact, now that I'm seeing it, I'm 100% certain that I've made a mistake. But. We're gonna to play it by ear, and we're just gonna see how this turns out. But yes, um, I don't know that I like the thought of Myrtle dealing with what right. we're seeing here. Request stress concentration mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. measure. Jessica might very well be able to cover the left-hand side for the time being. But yes, uh, we do have a hound coming. Freeze! I think we're probably going to, we're probably getting to a point where I want to... Mm, okay, we're definitely getting to a point here where we're wanting some additional backup. But yes, the left side is holding up. This might be a decent... Mm, actually, does... Yes, okay, how does this has a range? We're good. Console can do well in his role. But yes, we are doing okay. I don't like... What's going on with Tora? But she's going to survive, I suppose. Mm, this I don't like what's going on with Tom Cyrus. Um, mm. Maybe we should do something like this. Of course, Amia probably wasn't the best choice, given circumstances. Um, hmm. Oh dear. Okay, we've lost the stealth. Yes, Ansel having to heal himself is probably... Well, no, it's definitely very bad for us. It's definitely something I'd rather avoid. So, assuming that we don't live this, it would probably be best to position him further back. It is a little bit... Mm, this was a very bad idea, actually. Um, so we're just going to adjust that and... Uh, oh dear, he's just lost someone. Okay, so the left-hand side I don't think is going to continue holding. Yes, especially since we don't have healing. Um, all right. So yes, there's a chance that we could survive this, but I'm not optimistic. Hmm. Okay, so here I think the issue was broadly the fact that we, well, hmm. The road's been demolished. Enemy pursuit vehicles intercept. I do feel like we were a bit short on damage, so probably the very far back position that we put Jessica in. Right, I did. Rem I do remember that we did discover that the. You do get a lot of sanity back when you drop out of a mission. Operation commencing. But yes. I think... Okay. Since I'm wanting to think more, be more thoughtful with our plans, let's be a little bit more thoughtful. So, the left-hand side 
has quite a bit of room for the enemies who, you know, go there to... Yeah, the enemies that step on the left-hand side will have a lot of opportunity to start taking damage from the active Originium. Because of that, it's probably best to leave that side largely... Well, no, not largely undefended. But I don't necessarily feel the need to put much defense down far in advance. Yes, enemies can, you know, die a little bit before they reach us, ideally. The right-hand side, it's definitely an area where I want to be a little bit more cautious, I think. Though, yes, the issue being, I think this is a situation where having a multi-target medic would have been better, and maybe I should have thought about this before going into the mission, but having a multi-target medic would probably have been the play here so as to keep the unit here healthy while also keeping whoever's in front of them healthy. Though, of course, we don't strictly need someone to be in front of them. We could also have someone behind them, for instance. But if we're not going to have someone in front of them, we definitely need whoever's there to be tough to be able to hold up to enemies and the Originium. So that might be a place for a medic, or not a medic, a defender. But yes, on Cyrus, maybe isn't the very, very best for this situation. I'm here to help. But she'll do just fine, I think. Yeah, I guess, yeah, these enemies... On Cyrus is tough, and possible. these enemies enemy are not, broadly speaking, so we're probably okay. Because, yeah, I think probably a lot of the issue just comes down to me being quite afraid of active originium. Um, yeah, we'll play Korra a little early. But yes, um, since we have things as they are. We need healing sooner rather than later. Yes, of course, now we have the issue that, yeah, like I said, since we don't have anyone in front of our defender, the uh, defender is kind of left to their own devices, which is not great, necessarily. Onsol does have... Okay, don't... Get too okay. Don't get too ambitious. Yeah. Okay. Thinking, thinking. Um. Aura can be fine again. Her defense should make it so. Even without the. Her defense should make it so. Even without. Hmm, I really don't like anything that's going on here. We just lost uh, Estelle. Um. Oh dear. Hmm. Okay. So. Definitely, we're having some issues. Again, part of the issue is probably the fact that Korra does not have the capacity to hold this lane on her own. Hmm. Yeah, she simply does not have the damage output. Fire Whistle could have been a decent choice. Yeah, things like the Sarcas Swordsman are what I was afraid of when I was when I saw the uh, saw the active Originium. <laughs> but yes. So of course there are other op uh, options to consider. But yes. So Quora is able to block, but if we don't have anyone in front of her, then she's going to be blocking a lot and not uh, making much headway, especially when her second skill is active, because while she can block four units, she's not, you know, while she can block four units, she isn't able to damage any of them. So enemies will simply pile up and thus uh, it will be bad. Also, Onsol and Hibiscus are not my highest level medics. With pleasure. I've just been reminded. 
So yes, Perfuma, I think, will fulfill this role quite well. I think this is a situation where we need her. Again, I want to get out of the habit that I've sort of been in, where I tend to think of this in terms of, I tend to think of the game in terms of, you know, finding a solution, finding a perfectly elegant solution where, you know, I place everything down in the one tile that they should be, every one down on the one tile that they should be on the first time and, you know, don't have to move anyone around, don't lose anyone at any point and don't have to adjust my team, just need to adjust my strategy. But part of that is motivated by, you know, the concern that taking time to think things through would, you know, detract from the stream itself because that's time not spent winning, basically. But if we can come up with a good strategy, that could potentially save us many, many attempts. So, anyway. Von Cyrus is doing... Yeah, most of our units are doing fine. Again, the issue is that on the right-hand side, enemies are piling up, not getting eliminated. And on the left-hand side... I don't know. Honestly, we just didn't do much on the left-hand side, that that go-around, so that's probably a big part of the issue. I'll do my best to take care of everyone. Yes, I'm Myrtles, we will place further back. Everyone, let's play! If we're not having... Yeah, okay. If Pon Cyrus's damage isn't, like, a huge hammer, issue, so if we're not trying to prevent enemies from going forward, and we could have just placed Pon Cyrus further forward, I suppose, but if we're not trying to prevent enemies from getting onto the tile at this point, then really Ooh, placing her as far back as we possibly can is probably for the best because that will give the enemies the most time to die. But yes, given what we've seen, I think that, I don't know that we want to deploy her right away, but the pulling fire whistle is probably a very good idea just in general. We might want to switch out Meteorite for, well, no. I think if we're going to deploy Meteorite anywhere, it will be covering the right hand side. But yes, we definitely need to start making some plays though, because yeah, things are starting to get a bit challenging for us. This could so this be good. I don't know if we'll really need... Deal. In fact, we'll, it probably would have been better to me. face her upwards. Because, yeah, we're there's a good chance that we're not going to place any units around here. But there's a good chance that we would have. I would have wanted to place some units up there. And, yeah, so... I do want more range on Flora. But yes. We can get a little bit more GT out of her. Yes. Come on, chin up. How do we want to swing this? I think we're doing okay. Again, lots of blocking is good on Tora. And it's a... Uh, yeah, Fire Whistle can do AoE damage, so it's not as imperative. Not as imperative that we have someone who can... Uh, not as imperative that we have someone who can do it, uh, meteorite specifically, I suppose. Fire. Yes. Of course, I don't want to let things go too far. I think on the right hand side, we're going to want a medic sooner rather than later. Um, this should work. You'll yes. pay for that. It's safe here. And we've reached the unit limit. But I don't believe Myrtle's really going to contribute much for us going forward. At least not as much as this one's for you. a different unit. Estelle doesn't do as much damage as Matoi Maru. Oh dear. Hmm. We're definitely... Hmm. Okay, yeah. I don't like what I'm seeing here. Uh... Oh, I don't like what I was seeing on the left-hand side either, or I wouldn't have liked it if I had paid attention. Oh dear. So yes. So, enemies aren't dying fast enough on the right-hand side once again. But compounding that issue is, yeah, the fact that our defense there is simply insufficient. 
idea the best plan possible. Yes. On Cyrus, we left around too long. And yeah, the enemies on the left. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, enemies on the left just I'm fine. started leaking too Get it much. Together, everyone. <laughs> But yeah, I think on the left-hand side we needed more defense, and on the right-hand side it might have honestly been better if we had tried to prevent enemies from getting on the active Originium rather than trying to deal with them once or yet. Yeah, dealing with them by placing a an operator on it. At the very least, I don't know I honestly don't know what I was thinking, because Quora is certainly not the not the play to place on an active Originium tile. Because yeah, she does not have all that much attack on her. Yeah, Myrtle. Myrtle has more attack. Myrtle has significantly more attack. Quora probably has some of the lowest attack out of all the operators we have on our team. Yeah, Jessica has a higher attack. Yeah, that was that was not the play. So, yeah, again, right-hand side, probably we will get more value out of stopping enemies from getting on the tile. Left-hand side, we'll get more value out of taking advantage of enemies having been on the tile. Yes, ideally stalling enemies on the left-hand side will be a little bit better, I think. Though how we will stall precisely remains to be seen. But yes. Fire Whistle might not be the play here. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think I've got something. But yes. Placing Pawn Cyrus ahead of the tile. You need me I think to. is good. This place. You will shudder. But yes, Myrtle being placed past, well, yeah, it'd be quite hard I'm to place to her in front of the tile, I guess, or rather it'd be suboptimal to do so. Yes, with this, it will be very important that we get the appropriate damage Requesting on Ponsiris so that enemies measure. don't pile up. Of course, it won't be as important to, yeah, okay, no, we do definitely need things to happen here. Okay. Got it. So. I don't like what I'm seeing here already. Mm -hmm. Get ready, guys. All right. Omnia can deal with it okay, though, it seems. But yes. Having a unit on the active Originium tile is probably not a terrible idea. The only question is which units would I want to use for that goal. And that's a question that I don't yet have the knowledge to answer. I'm a little bit concerned about Amya's ability to continue, yeah, keep up the defense. But maybe I don't need to be. If we place her further to the right, Fire Whistle will be able to cover more ground. That might honestly be or the best, though maybe not that far. Oops. Artilleryman in position. Honestly, the the Ponsiris, uh, here, the Ponsiris, uh fire whistle combo mm -hmm. that we've We're been using a lot recently today, might be might That's be the play. Stay calm, my hmm. Okay. Yes? Perfumer can't cover the left side very well, so we will need a medic on the left side. Okay, at this I'll point, yeah, we will have very good defense on her, her, not her femur, rather, on Tom Cyrus. Of course, we have... How do we want to do this? The skill that we have on Matoi Maru might not be ideal, to be honest. But yes, um... I don't know that Estelle is the play either, to be honest. Yeah, Estelle is definitely dying very quickly. Um, so, with the... Hmm. Should work. 
Okay. So, new strategy. Left hand side, we will try to, as best we can, make take advantage of Frostleaf's range and her ability to slow. Given the strength of the enemies coming down that way, we will probably need to rely quite heavily on Cora's very high defense. Yes, let fragrance revive your mind. Yes, the right hand side is doing pretty okay now. I was a little bit worried about whether I'd want Omnia for the long run, considering the Sarkaz, uh, Crossbowmen, and Swordsmen both have uh, high arch resistance. But, you know, damage is damage. Like, even though they have, even though they have uh, resistance, they probably don't have, you know, 90 resistance or something like that something truly, truly remarkable. And yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, they, tr they probably don't have overwhelming resistance. Mission accomplished. Very good. Very well done, Doctor. Thank you kindly. Sith, you've just achieved, uh, received a medal. I would, I think that's for raising the trust of enough operators to a high enough level. Don't quote me on that, though. Let's look at the map a little bit before we get started. Okay. So this is interesting. We're probably going to see very different enemies coming from each of these two sides. Though, of course, we can't necessarily... Okay, please be careful of the Originium slugs in the south and the north, and don't let them go through our defense. Well, given slugs, I think our somewhat higher... Hmm, actually, hold on. Now that I think about it, slugs. Slugs could mean a lot of things. Alright, these guys aren't slugs. Those guys up there, though, are slugs. They're not the, the terribly troubling type of slug, though, so we're maybe okay. Maybe we're fine. Yes, anyway, as I was saying, so our newly heightened focus on being able to deal damage to enemies quickly, or more specifically, damage to multiple, multiple enemies quickly, will probably be a benefit to me. Because, yeah, Estelle doesn't take a whole lot of damage from the slugs, and she dishes... Mm, okay, this is... <laughs> this is what I was afraid of. Mm, I don't like that. Um... All right, Jessica is as good as dead. Um, we might as well get some use out of her, I suppose. But yeah, she's not sticking around for long. Yes, hello, TVPP. Indeed, that is a very appropriate uh, emoji for what's about to happen to Jessica. But yes. Estelle survived the slug pretty okay, though. So... Alright, left hand side we're going to need some more defense sooner rather than later. We might want, um... Again, I don't know if Matoi Mar is necessarily a great option for this, but she's an option. Yes, I don't like the crossbowmen. There are definitely options that we could use to have a bit of a sturdier... Yeah, a bit of a sturdier, uh... Hmm, okay, so... Plugs. We definitely, definitely want these things to be destroyed. Um, I've got a clear shot. How do we want to make that happen? That won't cover anything, but we could use... Yeah, we could use Korra. I don't like Korra being here specifically, because, yeah, that does mean that Matoi Mar is not going to be able to use her abilities quite as effectively as I might like. Aura might not stand up to much more exploding unless we get some more healing on her. The top side is doing pretty okay. Also, once again, thanks for dropping by PvPG. I hope you're doing well today. Pardon, that was a... I missed the pleasantries because I was a little bit uh, afraid of the slugs, so... But yes, at any rate, Aura's holding up well. Matoi Maru isn't contributing a whole lot in her current position. 
We've got Sarcast Swordsman coming up, so they're, you know, not, not anything too awful. Certainly, I think they're something that Aura can handle with relative Focus ease. Fire. We've got some Sarkaz Snipers, or Marksmen. Right. Um, Meteorite uh, is going to perish, unfortunately, if we don't do something about that. Um, what can we do? Um, nothing, actually. I had thought that maybe we could swing things Doctor? such that... Uh, yeah, such that we could distract fire. them with Fire Whistle, but no, that was uh, a doomed proposition. All right, I wasn't yes. paying attention to the health of my units up top. Probably should have switched off, uh, or probably should have removed, probably should have removed Matoi Maru faster. Do more damage up top, I think. I'm not... For as much trust as I place in her, I don't place that much trust in Fire Whistle's ability to endure what's going on uh, around her. Amiya and apply do. some additional damage. I don't know if that's going to be a good thing in our current situation. We're holding pretty well. I'm glad that I haven't retreated from Cyrus. Of course, her very high defense isn't going to help her that much against an Arts Fighter. In fact, it's not going to help her at all against an Arts Fighter. But it is what it is. But yes. She is surviving Don't just fine. Afraid. She is surviving just fine. Just I didn't activate. Uh, I didn't. Do I need to activate her this skill? It would probably be best if I did. Yes. But yes. Now everything's fine up top. We just need to wait for these slugs to explode. Fire. And actually, uh, actually, I think we're, I think we're done. Actually. Uh, yeah. We Let's should be good. This out. should be all of the enemies that we need to kill. So we might uh, suffer a little bit from all the explosions that are about to happen, but no, we're fine. Okay. Get Very back. good. Very good. Clean, clean. I, I really did it. I managed to protect everyone by myself. Yes, very encouraging results so far. So yes, once again, a little bit more flexibility in my thinking has helped a lot. Yeah, being willing to change things up, Sip, by the way. Yeah, being willing to change things up helped a lot. But yes, Miriapoda too, so we're facing more slugs it seems like. Battlefield is narrow this time. Please think carefully about where to deploy operators. That is the goal. <laughs> that is the goal. So, we'll be fine if we stick together. how do we want to swing this? You need me to. I'll wreck this place. On Cyrus is always a pretty safe play, I found. I wonder. I guess we're probably... I was a little bit worried that we were going to start seeing infused slugs right away, but honestly, that's probably not anything to really expect this early on into a mission. Intimidate the yes. enemy? Again, Estelle is quite strong and more than able to sustain herself by destroying slugs. But yes, the more there are, the more health for her, basically. But yes, we are now getting a good opportunity to see her make the best use of her abilities, I think. Alright, we're seeing drones come by, so we're definitely going to need right. Jessica. And, ooh, okay, 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 okay. Now things get interesting. In fact, things get, uh, bad. Uh, hey, no, one step hmm. Okay, so. We need more ability to deal with drones. I don't know that... I'm very worried about all of this. Um, Quora is... Yeah, I should have deployed a medic sooner. Oh, dear. Okay, so, Aura isn't going to survive for much longer. So this is a battle. Aura will probably survive now that she has a medic. She's pretty tough. 
Okay. That being said, I don't think we're going to survive the stages of Blast from the Past, indeed. I say that as though I've experienced it in the past, but, uh, but yeah. I take it you are a long-time Arc Knights player yourself. Um, okay, we have lost because we don't have... I guess I could have deployed Amia, but I don't know if she would have been a great opportunity for those... or a great option for those drones. She would have targeted them, but I don't know that she would have killed them. But yes. So, the slugs start to be an issue pretty early on, the explosive slugs. What are we seeing? Well, we're seeing a lot of things that we haven't seen yet. Okay. So, infused slugs. Aura can do pretty well against them. I'm not... Yeah, she can do especially well against them, considering that for extended periods of time, she doesn't attack, which means that the slugs get slowed down a fair amount. I wasn't paying that much attention to enemy pathing to be able to, yeah, to have noticed whether the slugs move just in a straight line towards the, towards the goal, or rather the infused slugs. I definitely saw the normal slugs, you know, going this way and that. I think I'm going to be a little bit proactive here and swap out to another anti-air sniper. But yes, um, who do we want to go for? I think let's use let's use cruise. Um, Everybody loves cruise. But yes, so Pon Cyrus was fine. She did her job just as we want her to. Um, yeah, cru cruise emote, very good. But yes, cruise will do us just fine, I think. And otherwise, yes, Tom Cyrus is good for her position. Yeah, Estelle also did very good. Again, the issue was just when the explosive slugs started coming around. We needed a little bit more support for her, or a little bit more defense in front of her. But yes, funneling slugs into this little area here will be good. My I think. pushover look should pull a lot of enemies here. I'll give you the best stress concentration yes. point. Deploying a sniper sooner rather than later will give me a better opportunity to plan around them. Yes, positioning them further backwards will make it so they can't contribute as much to the actual fight itself, to all of the slugs and whatnot. But it will make them safer from the explosions. In fact, I should, if we place a sniper here and here, they should still be able to deal with the drones perfectly fine while being completely slug proof. Of course, having more units sort of... Oh, actually... Hmm. I didn't pay that much attention to the paths of the drones either. So this might be basically just for eliminating slugs, or eliminating drones. But it also might not work very well for that because I didn't see where their path converged. I'm pretty sure that they converge at a point where they were just going down the middle at a certain, after a certain while. But, oh well. Um. I think, oh, actually, we can see now. So they will actually, yeah, they will spend their flight path more or less in the sniper's range. The job. All, right. All right, I did miss again the sort of slug path there. Um, Estelle will endure, and she can, she will survive. She'll survive, and she'll be able to heal. Okay, so yeah, so the slugs are going to be... Right, 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 okay. So I have made a mistake here. Hmm. Well... Let me do it. Estelle can survive two slugs. I'm confident of that much. And as long as we put our medics outside of the range of the slugs, 
We should be okay. So this is there you are. Hmm. This is definitely the not the best strategy. Measure. But it is working. So I suppose I can't complain. So yeah, Sephora would probably be well served by having the opportunity to just take a little nap. But yes, if we actually, if we had placed, pay for that. if we had placed uh, hibiscus a little bit farther forward, or perfumer actually, we would have been able to cover. Uh, we would have been able to cover Flora. Now she just has to rely on her own skill for healing, and the yeah, she'll have to rely on her yes. own skill for healing Come and on perfumer. Not liking what I'm seeing here, so let's In position and ready to get a little bit silly, maybe. Freeze. Of course, having enemies stop roughly. Okay, yeah, we're definitely we're definitely going to be troubled here. I think that's uh, us done. Yeah. No, first aid needed. That's it. But yeah, so that was just an issue where we. Just needed some burst damage, which, uh, yeah, we didn't have on our team. Yeah, we needed to be able to deal with those slugs right away. Um, what could we have done to improve? So one thing, on the one hand, having Estelle here and having this be sort of our main... Okay. The thing is, though, I've been... Yeah, I was treating this like, you know, it was a given that the slugs would all sort of converge in one point. If we place defense on both sides, we're probably going to have an easier time because we won't have any one unit who is going to be enduring endless slug explosions. And yeah, place playing a little bit more forward will also allow us to be a little bit more aggressive or it would actually honestly it'll let it'll let us be a little bit more defensive to be honest but yes um so yeah i think pon cyrus is fine where she was let's go everyone i'll fire around for us all when we're done the only question is where we want to place our sort of Ready ancillary units The yes, cruise and cover a lot of distance here. Yeah, I think I'm going to avoid having slugs anywhere near here, so it should be safe to have medics here and there. Yes, Jessica can also contribute. It may have been useful to switch Jessica onto her second skill for a little bit more damage. Yeah, a little bit more sort of situational damage during certain points. Yes, of course, we do also have Fire Whistle as an option. Yeah, I think Estelle is a good choice for sort of this area. I don't want her to be, you know, the person who endures the most slug attacks. But I am willing to... Yeah, if we've got good healing on her, she should do fine. Because again, by having more units on the other yeah. sides... You shouldn't be enduring quite as much slug explosion. Yes, we might. This might be a little bit suboptimal. So this is a battlefield. It occurs to me that yeah, we did place. Okay, uh, yeah, Jessica no, is doomed. Um, so yes. So I'm realizing now I did place Jessica. I did, yeah, that wasn't a strategic miss. Miss, uh, that wasn't a strategic miss. That up. I just straight up placed her in the wrong spot. Yeah, I was thinking she didn't seem to be quite level with Jessica, but yeah, that's uh, definitely true. Definitely true. This. Mm, 
I'm not sure how much I like this, but I guess Latoya Maru does have pretty high defense. We need to kill this drone yesterday. Um, but unfortunately it is, uh, unfortunately it is today, so. Amya might be able to deal with additional drones, but if not, then yeah, we have already lost. Because yeah, I guess I've been very afraid of the slugs. But I don't necessarily need to be that afraid. Um, we can start killing things faster. That would probably be the best option here, I think. We might want to swap out Con Cyrus for, say, Fire Whistle. We just lost someone. Oh, we just lost Matoy Maru. Yeah, I was starting to think that her low defense probably would be the end of her, and indeed it was. Estelle's doing... Honestly, Estelle's doing great. Estelle's doing a lot better than I was expecting. And I'm very glad about that, considering that a large portion of our plan here was give Estelle a chance to do well. Yes. Perfuma. Oh dear. I wanted to act activate Perfumer's skill there, but I suppose even if I did, I probably wouldn't have been able to save uh probably wouldn't have been able to save uh Crossleaf. Indeed. So yeah, so that was a result. But I think we could very easily have gotten a better result there. So, we're going to restore some sanity, and we're going to go again. Ponsiris, once again, was fine. If we're going to have Ponsiris basically not be contributing to combat, we might as well switch her out for uh, Myrtle, to be honest. Um, yes. I think we'll be a little bit more aggressive with our snipers. Especially since we definitely don't want uh, the slugs to start getting by Myrtle while she's in the middle of her skill. And... Okay, no. Yeah, we need to hold off. This was uh, a little bit... Okay, there we go. This is fine. So yes. Should have placed Cruz a little bit earlier, but we did just fine. Okay, so... Now that we've got things under wraps, we can more or less do what we were doing. But yes, of course, we do need to think about where we want to place the humor and all that. Um, where did I place the humor last time? It was here, I do believe. So this is a battlefield. Jessica no, will also need healing before too long. Yes, okay, it's good. Here. I probably should have uh, checked for verification before I did it, but uh, I'm glad everything worked out. Now that I think here about I it... Am. Now that I think about it, I'm worried, but no, we're doing okay. Okay, so. Right, okay. I did forget about Myrtle, though I should have been using her skill. Another thought that I had was, given her very high defense, we might be able to use Pon Cyrus in a similar sort of role as we use Makoi Maru. Of course, Pon Cyrus doesn't have as much ability to deal damage, but she does have more block. Worth considering. Yes. I think we will go with Korra, though. Yes, Quora just sort of feels like a safer bet to me. Huh? Estelle can do... is doing fine. I don't think I need to activate her skill oh, right away. Yes. Let fragrance revive your mind. Please, this is... no, I got, a, I got a little bit carried away there. We didn't need to activate this until things got a little bit more dangerous, I don't think. Freeze. But yes, Myrtle mm -hmm. can safely be swapped out, I think, and... Fire Whistle can be placed here, and I think that would be pretty much the most ideal. Probably it would have been better to switch Fire Whistle to her second skill. I think that would have been the most ideal option here. But I think she's going to do just fine with what she has. 
But yes, we might actually be at a point where we're not worried about drones anymore. Oh, yes. Well, no, okay, that is blatantly untrue, so we will continue as we were. Pay for that. Yes, Cora can continue to deal damage for the time being. We don't need a whole lot of defense on her. Honestly, we're doing just fine, I think. We might not do just fine forever, especially since, again, we are seeing Frosty get a little bit low. And we did actually lose Cora to the caster while I wasn't paying attention. But yes, that did go quite well, I think. Very well done, Doctor. And Perfumer thinks so too. But yes, S4-6. I think we'll... I think I'll do one more mission, and then I think I will call it a night. Because, again, it's a little bit... Uh, I'm a little bit tired, it's a little bit hot. Ooh, okay, this is going to be very interesting. We were just talking earlier... Yes, this battlefield is even narrower. It's recommended to op upgrade operators to get through it. We were talking earlier about how my usual strategy tended to be concentrating all of my, or as many of my units as I can, into a single sort of hard point. A single point that I would try to defend against enemies. How I wanted to get away from that strategy. I guess this map's going to pull me right back into it. Of course, what I came, the realization that I came to, of Please course, take good care of yourself while is I'm that gone. not, you know, it's not just about not doing, My you know, incoming. if you find yourself Death getting stuck everyone. in a rut, doing the same strategy over and over again, the thing that you should do isn't necessarily not do that strategy, it's just be able to do other strategies too. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. There's nothing wrong with a strategy that works, it's just, you know. If the strategy doesn't work for what you're doing, then do something else. Here I am. Enemy cover demolished. <sighs> yes, so Freeze. we're definitely going to be facing a lot of slugs. Artilleryman in but position. But the slugs, it seems, aren't terribly inclined to move terribly quickly. I'll show them what I can do. Hmm. We have seen that that enemy up there before, it would seem. I don't remember them well enough to be able to say what they are or what they do. I'm pretty confident Pond Cyrus can handle it one way or the other, but I'm very glad we have an artillery defender, though. That would probably be the best. You definitely... I didn't really think about this, but this is definitely a stage where we would want some range damage, I think. I'm very, very slightly worried about Amia. But I do think we're going to be okay. I'll give you the structure stable and sound. Nothing to worry about. Yes. Given that we've basically run out of melee tiles that are relevant to the mission, I'm definitely, definitely wishing that I had switched back in Meteorite. But yes, doubly so, since this fellow right here is going to be a big, big problem for Pon Cyrus to deal with all on her lonesome. That's fine with stay calm, my friend. I hear someone. But yes, placing enemy or placing our snipers inwards. No, okay, yeah, if we did that then they would have they would get exploded don't by slugs and we don't want that. that wound in no time. So there you are. We're doing pretty okay. We're doing pretty okay for ourselves. And yeah, I didn't really put much thought into it, but definitely this no, is a good a pretty good uh position for Anya and uh, Perfumer. But yes, now we're going to lose the DPS from... Oh dear. Oh dear. Um, 
Alright, so. I don't like what just happened to Fire Whistle. I guess we can get a little bit more DPS out of uh, a little bit more DPS out of Cross League. Yes. Crucially though, we're not going to get any arch damage out of her. Of course, at this point, most of our units that we have on the field are tough enough that they're basically no longer in any danger of dying. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, Ponsiris with her skill active has substantially, substantially more defense than Fire Whistle. So really, it's no surprise that she lives and Fire Whistle did not. Yeah, even, again, barring the fact that, uh, or not taking into account the fact that, uh, Fire Whistle was also disadvantaged from uh, having to block more units, as we discussed. But yeah, so I don't think we're in any reasonable risk of, we're at any reasonable risk of Pon Cyrus dying. Basically all we could potentially do now is speed up the rate at which this mission is over. And, uh, okay, so we can't with uh, the unit that we just deployed, but... Yes, Amya being here will be the big deciding factor, I think. Though, so, okay, yeah, we're doing fine. This will be over before too long. Here I am. Very good, very good. Are you proud of what we've achieved, Doctor? I am, yes. Thanks for asking, Estelle. All right. So yeah, so that, I think, we do still have 4-4 four, four not fully cleared, but that does leave us with everything up until this point having been beaten at least once. So, I think, yeah, next time I have no excuse that it will be time to do 4-10. But yeah. You know, I didn't specifically want to avoid doing 410. That definitely was a thought. But, again, largely that was just due to the fact that I didn't want to put in too, too much thought on too, too much of a hot day. This will be fun to watch, indeed. Unfortunately, though... Ah, thank you for the follow, TVPG. But yeah, unfortunately, we will have to wait a little while. Because, again, I've, uh... In the summer heat, I've just about reached my limit for the evening. Sit. But yes, once again, thank you for dropping by. And yes, we are now going to wrap up for the evening. But yes, so, Dark Knight has been fun, as always. But yes, always a delight to be streaming. I'm definitely, yeah, having gone from, you know, after the hiatus, I have now gone definitely from streaming feeling unfamiliar to streaming feeling, uh, a little bit, uh, you know, anxious to it feeling very comfortable and fun again. So yes, so I've definitely been enjoying things a lot, and I'm excited for next week. So yes, we will be continuing Arc Nights on Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So yeah, next Friday, we probably won't be playing Arc Nights, uh, assuming that everything goes well with our collab partner, and we, you know, collab as planned. But, uh, but yes, so definitely Arc Knights next Wednesday, and next Friday we will be either playing more Arc Knights if the collab does not happen, or we will be playing uh, we will be playing Coffee Talk if it does. So yes, now with all that said, if anyone has any raid suggestions, I would be delighted to hear them. We always like to do a raid before we head out. But yeah, so any, if anyone has any raid suggestions, I would be delighted to hear them. If not, I can find a target on my own. Yeah, I already went over the schedule, so I suppose I don't need to, to do that again. So I'll just give you a little bit of time to consider. Have a little bit of a sip. Sip. <clears throat> and yes. Yeah, nothing else to... Oh, I, I don't think I mentioned the times, actually, now that I think about it. But yes, Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and then, yeah, 
this Friday should be around 9 p.m. Central Time. All right. So yes, with all that said, not seeing any raid suggestions currently. So unless we have a last minute, uh, last minute entrant, I think tonight, I think tonight we will go and visit once again, uh, Svela, Svela Prisera, who is playing some League of Legends this evening. So yeah, she is a Valkyrie VTuber. We've seen her around a fair amount, raided into her quite a few times. So yeah. Um, so yeah. I think that's basically everything that I could reasonably say at this point. I guess I could just keep talking, but I've said everything that's pertinent, at the very least. So, get the raid set up. Raid. Bella Pacera. All right. And so, the customary raid message is, as always, we have arrived. Yes. Thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you have had a fine night. I hope that you'll continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much and farewell. Let us get this raid underway. Good night to you too, TVPG. Hope to see you around.